بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه أجمعين. So inshallah, this will be the first Tajweed class that we'll have, um, and uh, it will be second for you. But inshallah, we'll add uh, more content to it, so it'll be um, somewhat new to you as well, inshallah. So um, Tajweed. Uh, if you guys remember in the Tafsir class, we mentioned that every science has 10 principles. That before you begin any science, you need to do, know those pr 10 principles before you can decide whether that science is beneficial to you or not. Right? And as we will see that this science is one of the most beneficial sciences any Muslim can, can, uh, can uh, try to seek. Um, so the 10 principles, as we mentioned last time, uh, are the definition, the subject, the fruit, uh, the relation, the merit, uh, meaning its relation, uh, its relationship to other sciences, uh, its merit, uh, its pioneer, its name, its source, its ruling, and uh, its maxims. So these are the ten principles. So inshallah we'll go, um, basically the book that I shared with you guys on uh, over WhatsApp, has uh, some of these principles, so uh, we'll um, we'll go over the book and the principles that which are not in the book. Inshallah, we'll mention them uh, ourselves. Uh, the book, just a brief history on the book. The book is written by a Syrian sheikh, uh, may Allah protect him, by the name of Sheikh, sheikh Ayman Rushdi, and uh, he he has a PhD, so he's a he's a he's a doctor as well, um, and he. Basically, uh, he had a student who translated this work for him. And the student was actually a sister. Her name was Karima. Um, and uh, if you scroll down in the book, uh, let me see what page it is on. I'll show you. Uh, sister Karima mentions all of uh, her, uh, the chain uh, of scholars that, uh, that um, connects her to, um, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is something very interesting because you don't see this in other religions. One of the conversations I had with uh, some colleagues um, was um, one of the female colleagues mentioned that uh, uh, religions re usually don't accommodate uh, females, right? Uh, because like any religion you look at, it's all, you know, about, you know, only males can become teachers and teach. But in the religion of Islam, it's the opposite. It's not, that's not the case. Even even a woman can become teachers and became, can become sheikhs, and men can go and study under them. And many uh, Muslim scholars actually actually had female sheikhs, uh, sheikhs that they studied under. So Sister Karima will be our our sheikha, inshallah, for for this <laughs> for this uh, um, for the English part of the uh, of the uh, Tajweed class. And in, but at the same time, as I mentioned last time, I will also use uh, a book that uh, my, my sheikh uh, give, uh, gave me as a gift. Uh, basically, the parts that uh, are missing or have more explanation in either books, we'll try to, we'll try to use them as, so they complement each other. If something's missing uh, in this book, we'll mention it in this book. If something's missing in this book, we'll mention it here. So if you go to page uh, 14, you'll see uh, the chain of scholars that uh, connect Sister Karima to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she's the one who translated this work. So it's how many scholars, basically tw it's uh, 29 scholars, uh, 30 scholars, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this is basically, uh, all sciences are like this, basically. Uh, most sciences are like this, where you study under a sheikh who, who has studied under a sheikh all the way to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And especially the science, science of tajweed, recitation of the, of the Qur'an. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the first one who re, to recite it and teach it uh, to the Muslims. Um, okay, so we can... We can scroll down a bit. <clears throat> and the qira'ah that we will recite is, is, uh, is the qira'ah of Hafs uh, from Asim. And this is one of the most famous uh, recitations. 
uh, uh, one of the most um, spread recitations uh, amongst uh, the Muslim lands. Um, as, the, as you know, you, you may know that there are different recitations of the Quran, uh, just the uh, accents and certain harakat and uh, very minor differences in recitation, the way uh, certain things are pronounced or recited. Um, so th there are multiple. Um, uh, there are um, uh, seven and also there are actually ten, uh, ten recitations that, uh, that, that exist and some scholars have, have ijazah, have permission to teach all ten, ten, uh, ten recitations. But the recitation that we'll go over, we will study, uh, which is the most uh, popular recitation, is this recitation of Hafs, Hafs from Asim. And uh, if you go to page 13, you'll also see the uh, the Sanad, meaning the chain of scholars that uh, connects Hafs, uh, Rahimahullah, or Sheikh, uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he studied under Asim, and Asim uh, studied under Abu Abdul Rahman As-Sulami, uh, as and uh, Zurrub ibn uh, Hubaysh, and Sa'd ibn Iyas. And then they studied, um, and each of them studied under a group of uh, Sahabis. Uh, Abdullah, the son of Mas'ud, is, uh, is one of the Sahabis. Uh, Ubayyu ibn Ka'b mm -hmm. is another. Zayd ibn Thabit is another. Uthman ibn Affan is another. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib is another. Uh, again, Uthman ibn Affan is mentioned twice mm -hmm. here uh, because two of the sheikhs of Asim studied under uh, Uthman, the son of Affan. May Allah be pleased with them. And also Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is mentioned twice here. And Uthman, Imam Uthman, uh, radiallahu anhu, he actually uh, was uh, was murdered in a state of reciting Quran. Uh, uh, some narrations say that he was reading the Quran and the killers entered his room and he did not stop reading the Quran, even though he knew he was about to get, get killed. So they, they killed him while he was reciting the Quran. So basically our chain goes back to Imam Uthman. If we finish this book and... and, and, and uh, and if Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the tawfiq to complete it. Okay, so let's, um, we can go over the, um, the principles, inshallah. Uh, the principles in this book are, in, are on page, um, let's see. And this book is also available, I believe <coughs> a, a newer edition is available uh, for $46. I, that, that was the uh, uh, cheapest I, I could find. And uh, it, it's, it has many pictures, so it makes it very easy uh, to follow along. Um, but still, you'll need a teacher. Uh, with, with Tajweed, it's hard to just read, it, read a book and, and learn Tajweed. Okay, so if you go to page uh, 23, uh, Sheikh has Karima mentions the, uh, obviously this is, uh, the Arabic part is given to her by she, uh, uh, Sheikh Ayman, and the English part she's, uh, she, she has translated. Ta'arifuhu uh, fi lugha meaning its definition by in language or its linguistic definition and uh, sister karima translates it, translates it as its definition by linguistic definition uh, betterment uh, betterment beautification Betterment, beautification, uh, trying to attain perfection. These are all meanings of Ihsan. And in the terminology, if you guys remember, I mentioned in the, in the Tafsir class 
that the definitions could either be in lingu linguistic definitions or in terminology of a particular science. So in the terminology of this science that we're st studying, it has a slightly different uh, definition. And uh, the Sheikh says, هُوَ إِخْرَاجُ كُلِّ حَرْفٍ مِنْ مَخْرَجِهِ وَعِطَاهُ حَقَّهُ وَمُسْتَحَقَّهُ مِنَ الصِّفَاتِ In the terminology, uh, Tajweed means, in the terminology of the science that we're reading, Tajweed means uh, articulating every letter from its articulation point. Uh, and meaning pronouncing every letter from the point it's supposed to be pronounced uh, and giving the letter its rights and its dues of characters. Now what are the difference between rights and dues of characters? Uh, uh, Sheikh Karima mentions um, rights of the letters are its required characteristics that never have, that never leave it. Uh, me meaning there are certain characteristics, uh, letters, certain letters or letters have certain characteristics that never leave them. Letters have certain characteristics that, have, that never leave them, inshallah we'll go over them. And the dues of, um, and the dues of a letter are its pre presented characteristics that are present in, uh, in it some of the time and not present uh, at other times. Meaning there are certain letters depending on uh, uh, what harakas and what comes before them, what comes after them. Uh, there, those characteristics will change depending on uh, the uh, basically uh, uh, what precedes and what uh, what uh, what comes after it. So those are the linguistic and the defin its definition and terminology. Now uh, something that we used to do with our shiuch is. Um, uh, they would ask us to recite and, and we would recite for them and then if there, is, there was a need to explain something they would explain so if you guys feel comfortable uh, we can take turns I can recite some of these part, uh, sections and then you can recite and then we can uh, go back and forth if you guys don't feel comfortable I'll, I'll just read it myself you guys want to do that? I'll do it. Okay, so let's, um, uh, brother, uh, you're okay with that, brother Naim? Okay, so inshallah we'll take turns uh, between brother Naim and uh, brother uh, um, Akram. Uh, so uh, since you volunteered, brother Akram, you go first, inshallah. So we'll uh, reading the mawdu'ah. Let me recite the Arabic. Mawdu'ahu kalimatul Qur'an al-Karimi.